All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. <clears throat> I have a bit of a cough, so bear with me. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I welcome you and thank you for participating. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. Today's webinar is National Transit Database Data Reporting, Reporting Fundamentals, September 2019. We are pleased to have as our presenters today, Mitchell Fabs and Dan Barnes. Mitchell has been a validation analyst on the NTD team since July of 2018. <clears throat> Before that, he attended James Madison University, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics. Dan Barnes joined the NTD team in 2012. He is also a graduate of Clark, he is a graduate of Clarkson University, sorry, and currently works as a senior validation analyst for the urban reporting module of the National Transit Database. Um, for today's presentation, you can ask any questions at any time by typing it in the Q&A box. If you don't readily see the Q&A box, uh, there should be a menu bar with a few options on it. One of them is Q&A box, another one should be chat. Closed captions are also available and live. I'm seeing them scrolling right now. Um, the analyst who is not currently presenting will answer your questions for you. Any um, unanswered questions will be moderated at the end. Uh, if you haven't uh, obtained a copy of the presentation that was in your email, I pasted the link into the chat box, which my chat box disappeared. Um, I will find it. I can paste it again. <clears throat> and uh, if you have any uh, other questions, you can type that in the chat box and I will try to help you out as well. Um, I I think I'm turning the presentation over to Dan, but it might be Mitchell, so whoever's going to start, please go right ahead. Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar for Data Reporting Fundamentals. My name is Daniel Barnes, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Mitchell Fabs. In this presentation, we will be discussing an overview of the National Transit Database, key concepts to understand before reporting, how to start the NTD report, classifying different transit modes, we will go over the annual reporting forms, review the monthly and safety and security reporting forms, and conclude with a Q&A. The National Transit Database was established by Congress in 1974 to be the nation's primary source of information and statistics on the United States transportation systems. Data collected by the NTD is used to apportion roughly nine to twelve billion dollars each year to transit agencies, assist FTA in reporting on the state of public transportation, serve as a base for public transportation service planning, make public sector investment decisions, formulation of national policy, and source of data for measuring benchmarking. The entity serves as a central source for standardized public transit data across America. Data users who wish to understand a focal topic, agency, geographic region, or a time period related to public transportation can reference the data collected and published by the NTD. This data is a particularly reliable source for studying American transportation systems, as the data is verified by and published by the United States federal government. Sub-agencies are required by federal mandate to file an annual report. I will go into more detail on this on our next slide. Some agencies do not receive 5307 or 5311 funds, but wish to submit their data to the National Transit Database on a voluntary basis. Agencies are welcome to fill, are welcome to file an entity report voluntarily. Doing so allows the agencies to be included for consideration in the annual funding formula. This also allows their data to be included in the annual database publications with the other transit agencies. Agencies who report voluntarily must conform to the normal NTD reporting requirements and meet the same deadlines as if they were required to report. Congress requires agencies to report to the NTD if they receive or benefit from FTA Section 5307 or 5311 formula grants. These are government grant programs that disperse monetary assistance to public transit operators. If an agency receives either or both of these funds from FTA, they are required to report with no exception. You must also report to the NTD if you are an operator of public transportation and have assets still within their useful life 
that are funded with Chapter 53 funds. Now we will cover some key concepts to help us better understand public transportation. Public transportation, as defined by NTD, constitutes regular, continuing, shared ride service transportation services that are open to the general public or open to a segment of the general public defined by age, disability, or low income. A few common services that do not meet NTD requirements of public transportation include intercity bus, charter bus, and taxi voucher programs. Here's an example of what an agency may run into during the year. A private party reserves a transit vehicle as part of a charter service for a special event. The bus operates that day from noon to 8 p.m. and then returns back to the lot. The transit agency cannot report the data associated with this service to the NTD as charter services are not regular and continuing. Here we have an example of another common scenario. A transit agency contracts a ride hailing service to provide on-demand service to its paratransit riders. Those riders receive a limited number of subsidized on-demand rides per month, but are not guaranteed an exclusive ride. As of right now, this service may be eligible as public transit, but we would need more information. In order for this to be reportable, the agency must be paying the full cost of the service. The drivers and passengers cannot refuse additional passengers if there is available seating and the service operator must attempt to group all rides. Another key concept is identifying the service operated and whether it should be reported as revenue or deadhead. Revenue service is when a transit vehicle is providing public transportation and is available to carry passengers, regardless of whether the passengers pay a fare or not. A transit vehicle is deadheading when passengers are not allowed to be on the vehicle. This includes leaving or returning to the garage before or after you have completed a route, simply changing routes, and when the driver does not have the duty to carry passengers. Deadhead does not include activities such as operating training, fueling, washing, or maintenance testing. Another key concept is understanding ridership and the difference between linked and unlinked trips. A linked trip refers to a single trip where the passenger transfers between multiple stops to get to the final destination. A linked trip will consider the entire process one single trip. This is not how you report ridership to the National Transit Database. The correct way to report your ridership is using unlinked passenger trips. Unleased passenger trips are when passengers are counted each time they board vehicles, no matter how many vehicles they use to travel from their origin to their destination. Multiple transfers mean multiple trips. If a transit vehicle changes routes while passengers are on board, better known as interlining, the passengers should not be recounted. It is also important to know that employees or contractors on transit agency business are not considered passengers. The final key concept we will be discussing are the different data collection methods for passenger miles traveled and unlinked passenger trips. Passenger miles traveled are the cumulative sum of the distances ridden by each passenger. Passenger miles traveled are only required for agencies with full reporter types. So if you are a reduced reporter, you do not have to worry about collecting passenger miles traveled. There are two ways to collect passenger miles traveled, automatic passenger counties, counters or sampling. APCs are an automated means of counting boarding and aligning passengers, which are typically infrared beams placed by the door. If your buses are not equipped with APCs, you would then need to sample to collect passenger miles traveled. Agencies can choose to use the NCD sampling method, which can be found on the NCD website, or you can have a qualified statistician approve a different method. In the example you see below, there are 10 passengers that get on the stop at West and 3rd and proceed to travel two miles to the next stop. For this part of the trip, you would calculate 20 passenger miles traveled. 10 passengers traveling 2 miles equals 20 passenger miles. Typically, agencies collect 100% count of their only passenger trips as they use registering fare boxes or driver counts. 
ABCs are also typically considered 100% accounted UPT, but they must meet a certain accuracy threshold. I won't go into detail here on this, but if you have specific questions on this, please reach out to your analyst or feel free to ask us at the end of this presentation during the Q&A section. If you are unable to get 100% count of your UPT, you can then estimate UPT based on statistical sampling through various sampling methods. Now let's cover some of the basics on how to get started with the annual NTD report. If you are required to report to the National Transit Database or want to voluntarily and do not have an NTD ID yet, you will need to go to transit.dot.gov and complete an ID request. FTA will review the request and either approve, deny, or request more information. Within the request are relevant data that determines your reporting type, reporting deadline, and who we should reach out to with questions. FTA requires different degrees of reporting based on the type of funding received and the size of the operation. NTD classifies these by reporter type. The chart pictured here will help you understand what type of reporter you should be. There are eight different reporter types. They are full reporter, reduced reporter, separate service reporter, building reporter, planning reporter, group plan sponsor, Reduced Asset Reporter, and State Department of Transportation. A few of the common reporter types that receive or benefit from 5307 funds are listed here. Full reporters typically operate more than 30 vehicles across all modes and type of service or operate over fixed guideway and or high intensity bus. Reduced reporters operate fewer than 30 vehicles during peak service and do not operate over fixed guideway or high intensity busway. Separate service reporters do not operate service directly and contract out modes that are reported by another transit agency. Build reporters do not directly operate or contract out service, but is building or rehabilitating transit infrastructure. And planning reporters also do not directly operate or contract out service, but are currently spending 5307 funding on planning activities for future service. What are the main differences between full reporters and reduced reporters? Full reporters report much more detailed financial data, report passenger miles traveled, which are beneficial in federal funding apportionments. They report safety and, safety and security data on a monthly basis, and report resource data, which include maintenance activity and employee counts and hours. There are two asset-only reporter types, group plan sponsors, and reduce asset reporters. Group plan sponsors receive other Chapter 53 funds, not including 5307 or 5311, and also sponsors a transit asset management group plan. Reduced asset reporters receive non-5307 or 5311 FTA funds, typically 5310 funds, to operate public transit and use those Chapter 53 funded assets in public transit service. Are you able to only submit some of the required data to the NTD? No. All agencies must provide values for all required fields in the reporting system for their designated reporter type. On special occasions, waivers or certain requirements or reporting elements may be considered by FTA if you are unable to provide that required data. Please note that depending on your reporter type and what modes you operate, you may have different required fields and forms than other agencies. Now I would like to discuss some of the main NTD user roles and what privileges they have in the system. The CEO contact can edit, save, and submit all data and requests. The CEO is the only contact who can submit the original submission and also the only contact who can submit report requests, like extensions and waivers. The entity contact is the validation analyst's main point of contact and can edit, save, and submit all data except for the original submission in any reporter request. The safety contact is the safety and security analyst's main point of contact. The safety contact can edit, save, and submit all data except for the SNS-20, which needs to be done by the CEO contact.
Now let's cover a few of the important submission dates that you will need to know and remember. If your fiscal year ends sometime between January 1st and June 30th, your annual report will be due at the end of October. If your fiscal year ends sometime between July 1st and September 30th, your annual report will be due at the end of January. And if your fiscal year ends sometime between October 1st and December 31st, your annual report will be due at the end of April. For those of you who are full reporters, you will need to submit your monthly ridership data on the last day of the following month. For example, June's data must be submitted by July 31st. Finally, let's discuss your safety and security form deadlines. The SNS-20 form is due at the end of February every year. The SNS-30 forms are due at the beginning of the year for each mode. The SNS-40 forms are due no later than 30 days after the date of a major event. And the SNS-50 forms are due on the last day of the following month, just like the monthly ridership data that I just covered. Now let's briefly go over each of the different modes of service. Motor bus is a transit mode using rubber tired passenger vehicles operating on fixed routes and schedules over roadways. These vehicles are powered by a motor and fuel or electricity stored on board the vehicle. Route deviated or point deviated services are considered motor bus. Bus rapid transit is a transit mode that operates over 50% of its route in a separated right of way dedicated for public transportation use during peak periods. It features and emulates rail service, such as defined stations, traffic signal priority, short headways, and separate branding. Commuter bus is a local fixed route bus transportation that, mildly, that primarily connects outlying areas with a central city or urbanized area and operates predominantly in one direction during peak periods. This mode has limited stops and at least five miles of continuous closed door service between stops. Commuter rail is essentially the rail version of commuter bus and is generally characterized by multi-trip tickets, specific station to station fares, railroad employment practices, relatively long distances between stops, and only one to two stations in the central business district. Demand response is a transit mode operating on roadways in response to requests from passengers to the transit operator. These are typically scheduled in response to passenger calls and then vehicles are dispatched to provide the rides. Passengers with similar origins and destinations are often grouped together. Demand response does not operate over a fixed route or a fixed schedule unless temporarily satisfying a special transit need. It is much more commonly operated to meet ADA requirements. Demand response taxi is a special form of demand response mode operated through taxi cab providers with a system in place to facilitate ride sharing. Remember, voucher programs are not reportable. Ferry boat is a mode with vessels carrying passengers and vehicles over a body of water. Heavy rail is an electric railway that operates service in exclusive right of way. These are your typical subway stations with long trains and short distances between stops. Hybrid rail primarily operate routes on the national system of railroads, but do not operate with the characteristics of commuter rail. These are typically light rail type vehicles, such as diesel multiple unit trains. Jitney is a unique form of bus service on fixed routes where multiple companies share the operation of the service. A common example of Jitney is found in Atlantic City. Light rail is an electric railway that operates in mixed traffic or intersects with roadways at, at grade crossings. These are shorter trains that travel short distances within a city and the immediate suburbs. These are powered from overhead electric lines via a trolley or pantograph. Streetcar rail are typically one or two car trains powered by overhead catenaries that operate in mixed traffic. Trolley bus is a fixed route service that uses manually steered rubber, tire, rubber tired vehicles powered by electric current from overhead wires using trolley poles. 
Please note that rubber tire replica trolleys or historic trolleys powered by an onboard motor are not included in this mode. These would most likely be considered regular motor bus service. Van pools operate as a ride sharing arrangement providing transportation to a prearranged group of individuals. To be considered public transportation, van pool programs must use vehicles with a minimum seating capacity of seven people, including the driver. They must use vehicles for which 80% of yearly mileage comes from commuting. They must be open to the public. They must be actively engaged in advertising the van pool service to the public, and they must be publicly sponsored. The other modes of transportation we recognize, but are much more uncommon, are aerial tramways, Alaska Railroad, cable car, inclined plane, monorail, and publico. If you are interested in detail about these modes, please take a look at the NTD policy manual. Now, let's discuss the two types of service, directly operated and purchased transportation. Directly operated is simply when the service is operated by the reporting transit agency. The agency uses their own employees to operate the vehicles. On the other end, purchase transportation is a transportation service provided to a public transit agency from a public or private transportation provider based on a written contract. Agencies will typically buy service from local contractors to operate service on behalf of the transit agency. Now let's quickly discuss the right-of-way classes. Fixed guideway is when a transit service uses and occupies a separate right-of-way for the exclusive use of public transportation. Examples of fixed guideway include using rail, fixed catenary systems, waterways for ferry operations, and bus-only lanes. Mixed traffic right-of-way is not considered fixed guideway. This is when transit vehicles share normal streets and roads with regular mixed, traffic, mixed passenger traffic. The final right-of-way class is high-intensity bus. And these are simply roadways that transit agencies will reserve at certain times of the day or week for transit use. I will now turn the rest of the presentation over to Mitchell, who will discuss the various reporting forms. Thank you, Dan. Now we will discuss the various annual reporting modules. We'll begin with an overview of the different modules and then dive into the applicable reporting forms that pertain to each module. The entity collects data on multiple aspects of transit agencies' operations during a month or fiscal year. The data that is collected is organized into several distinct reporting modules based on the type of data reported in each. The six reporting modules are as follows. Basic, financial, service, asset, resource, federal funding allocation, and declarations. The names of the forms coincide with the first letter of the module name. For example, the forms in the basic module begin with the letter B, the forms in the financial module begin with the letter F, and so on. The first annual reporting module we will cover is the basic module. In the basic module, the entity collects information regarding transit agency's organization types, service area characteristics, and contractual relationship details. The B10 identification form is where agencies report basic organizational and service area information. All agencies that report to the NTD complete this form. Agencies that purchase or sell transit service report the applicable financial and operating data on the, con on the contractual relationship B30 form. A B30 form will be filled out for each contractor the agency contracts with, unless the contract details differ between nodes. The next annual reporting module we will cover is the financial module. In the financial module, the entity collects data regarding how much money agencies spent on public transportation during their fiscal year, breaking down the expenses according to what the funds were spent on. Agencies report how much they spent within each object class and function. They also report where the funding came from. For each dollar spent during the year, agencies must pinpoint how much came from grants, local government funds, fair revenues, donations, 
or other funding sources. Financial account rules are detailed by the Uniform System of Accounts, or USOA. This is FTA's prescribed accounting system. Now let's cover operating expenses. These are expenses associated with the operation of the transit agency, including goods and services purchased and are classified by function or activity. For reference, the basic functions and object classes are defined in sections 5.2 and 6.2 of the Uniform System of Accounts. Operating expenses are consumable items with a useful life of less than one year or an acquisition cost less than the lesser of the capitalization level established by the government unit for financial statement purposes or $5,000. Moving on to capital expenses. Capital expenses are related to the purchase of equipment, equipment meaning an article of non-expendable, tangible personal property which has a useful life of more than one year. Additionally, it must have an acquisition cost which equals or exceeds the lesser of the following. The capitalization level established by the government unit for financial statement purposes or $5,000. Please note that capital expenses do not include operating expenses that are eligible to use capital funds. Now let's discuss direct expenses versus shared expenses. To report the total cost of delivering each mode of transportation, agencies with two or more modes must calculate both direct and shared costs of providing service. Agencies should determine which expenses are direct expenses traced to a particular mode and should also determine which expenses are deemed shared expenses. Once the shared expenses have been identified and separated from direct expenses, agencies may allocate the shared expenses based on an approved cost allocation method. Now we will cover the reporting forms of the financial module beginning with the Sources of Funds F10 form. On the F10 form, agencies report the sources of funds for operating and capital expenses. The funding categories cover sources generated by agencies and from federal, state, and local governments. Agencies report the following data by the original revenue source. The total amount earned, the amount applied for operating expenses, and the amount applied for capital expenses. Agencies with building, planning, separate service, or full reporting types must complete this form. Next is the uses of capital F20 form. On this form, agencies report the funds expended on capital projects by category. The form further defines capital expenses as an improvement of existing transit services or expansion of transit services. All agencies that, that purchase capital and report under the build, plan, separate service, or full reporting types must complete the F20 form. Moving on to the operating expenses F30 form. On this form, agencies reporting operating expenses by object class and function as defined by the Uniform System of Accounts. All agencies that operate or purchase transit service under the plan, separate service, or full reporting types complete the F30 form by mode and type of service. The next form is the operating expenses summary F40 form. This form provides an agency-wide provides an agency -wide summary of the operating expenses from the F30 form or forms. Agencies may report reconciling items on the F40 form, such as depreciation, interest expenses, and leases. All agencies that report under the plan, separate service, or full reporting types must complete this form. The last form of the financial module is the Statement of Finances F60 form. On this form, agencies report select object classes such as cash and receivables, investments, special funds, long-term debt, estimated long-term pension liabilities, and other estimated liabilities. Agencies with plan, separate service, build, or full reporting types with the four organization types listed below fill out the F60 form. The next annual reporting module we will cover is the asset module. In the asset module, agencies must report a detailed inventory of the assets used to support their transit service. 
This includes large-scale assets like maintenance facilities or train passenger car fleets, as well as smaller-scale assets like service vehicles or special track work assets. In 2018, agencies began reporting expanded asset inventory module, or AIM data, within their NTD annual report, as required by the Transit Asset Management, or TAM, rule. TAM uses transit asset conditions to guide how to manage capital assets and prioritize funding to improve or maintain a state of good repair. The first form we will cover in the asset module is the Stations and Maintenance Facilities A10 form. On the A10 form, agencies report the number of passenger stations, both accessible and non-accessible, in accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, the number of elevators and escalators within passenger stations, and the number of maintenance facilities by size and ownership. Before moving on to the remainder of the asset module forms, let's take a look at this chart that shows the TAM phase-in schedule. Note for the upcoming 2019 report year, agencies are required to set internal performance measure targets and report those targets to the NCD. Also for the 2019 report year, this is the first year that agencies are required to submit a narrative report on meeting their targets to the NCD. Additionally, agencies are required to report condition data on their vehicles and agencies are now required to report condition data on at least half of their facilities as well. Continuing with the asset module forms, we come to the Transit Asset Management Facilities Inventory A15 form. Agencies report inventory data for transit facilities on the A15 form. All passenger stations and parking facilities should be included. Agencies would report a condition assessment for passenger stations for which they have capital responsibility as defined by the TAM rule. Agencies also report inventory and condition assessments for administrative and maintenance facilities for which they have capital responsibility if the use is greater than incidental. Next is the Transit Way Mileage A20 form. Agencies that operate over high intensity busway or fixed guideway provide mileage data on the A20 form with the exception of ferry services. Moving on to the Revenue Vehicle Inventory A30 form. On this form, agencies inventory revenue vehicles and their total fleet as of the last day of the agency's fiscal year by mode and type of service. All agencies that report service data also report revenue vehicle fleet information by mode and type of service on the A30 form. Next is the Service Vehicle Inventory A35 form, which is where agencies inventory service vehicles. Service vehicles are vehicles which indirectly deliver transit service, maintain revenue vehicles, and perform transit-oriented administrative activities. Please note that service vehicles are not to be confused with revenue vehicles, which are used to carry passengers. Examples of reportable service vehicles include vehicles used by administrative or maintenance staff, tow trucks, and work trains. Examples of non-reportable service vehicles include golf carts, small forklifts, and flatbed train cars. The final asset module reporting form is the Transit Asset Management Performance Measure Targets A90 form. Agencies report their next fiscal year performance targets on assets for which they have capital responsibility on the A90 form. Targets are reported for rolling stock, equipment, facilities, and infrastructure. Beginning in report year 2019, agencies are required to submit a narrative report on the A90 form, which should report on progress during the year to meet targets set in the previous report year. The narrative report should also describe any changes to the system, if applicable. You can find examples of narrative reports on FTA's website by visiting the Regulations and Guidance section for Asset Management. The next annual reporting module is the service module. In the service module, agencies report detailed information about the service they provide and that passengers consume. Service data are operating statistics that provide insight into the effectiveness and productivity of a transit agency. This includes the services supplied, such as revenue miles and revenue hours operated by an agency. It also includes services consumed such as the number of passenger trips taken and the total passenger miles traveled. 
An agency's reporter type determines the level of detail that they must report. There is only one form in the service module, the Service S10 form. Agencies report services supplied and consumed on this form. Agencies that report under the full reporting type complete this form by mode and type of service. This form is tailored to the type of mode being reported. For example, the S10 form for a rail mode reports trains in operation, passenger cars in operation, train hours and miles, and passenger car hours and miles. For non-rail modes, the S10 reports vehicles in operation, vehicle miles and hours, charter service hours if applicable, ADA trips, and sponsored service trips. The next annual reporting module we will cover is the resource module. In the resource module, full reporters report the labor resources they have available for the year, including the number of employees they had during the year as well as the number of hours worked. This allows data users to understand the labor resources each transit agency utilizes to operate their systems on an annual basis. Agencies also report the number of mechanical breakdowns and failures their vehicles experience each year. Any mechanical incident which prevents a transit vehicle from working at its optimal performance would be reported, regardless of whether the vehicle completes its trip or has to return to the garage. The first resource module form is the Employees R10 form. On the R10 form, agencies report data on transit employees <clears throat> at year-end and total hours worked during the year. Agencies that report directly operated service under the full reporting type fill out the R10 form by mode. The next and final resource module form is the Maintenance Performance R20 form. Agencies report data on revenue vehicle system failures on this form. The two types of failures that are reported are major mechanical system failures and other mechanical system failures. Major mechanical system failures are failures of some mechanical, el mechanical element of the revenue vehicle and includes vehicles that were prevented from completing or starting a scheduled revenue trip due to a limited number of safety concerns caused by the failure. Other mechanical system failures are failures of some other mechanical element of the revenue vehicle and due to the agency policy prevents the vehicle from completing a scheduled trip or from starting the next scheduled trip even though the vehicle is physically able to continue in revenue service. System failures that were the result of a collision, natural disaster, or vandalism would not be reported as a major or other mechanical system failure. All agencies that report under the full reporting type must complete the R20 form, separating data by mode and type of service. We will now discuss the other annual reporting modules, including federal funding allocation, declarations, reduced reporting, and statewide characteristics. In the federal funding allocation statistics module, agencies allocate data across the urbanized areas and non-urbanized areas they serve using the FFA-10 form. FTA uses the FFA-10 form to apportion funds for sections 5307, 5311, 5329, 5337, and 5339. All agencies that report urban service data fill out the FFA-10 forms by mode and type of service. In the declarations module, the CEO endorses and attests to the accuracy of the data submitted in the NCD annual report on the CEO certification D10 form. All full and reduced reporters must complete the D10 form. On this form, the CEO also certifies the completion of Independent Auditor Statements, or IAS. These statements assure FTA that an independent entity has compared NTD data to internal agency records describing any discrepancies found. There are two types of Independent Auditor Statements. The Independent Auditor Statement for Financial Data, or IAS-FD, and the Independent Auditor Statement for Federal Funding Allocation Data, or IAS-FFA. These statements assure FTA that an independent entity has compared NTD data to internal agency records. The IAS-FD is required for the first year and every 10 years thereafter from all urban transit operators. 
The IASFA is required every year for agencies operating in large urbanized areas with more than 100 bombs. Moving on to the reduced reporting module. Agencies with fewer than 30 bombs or vehicles operated in annual maximum service may elect to report a reduced amount of service, financial, and safety data on the reduced reporting RR20 form. The RR20 form captures total modal expenses, uses of capital, and sources of funds for transit operations and capital by funding category. Total modal expenses and service data are reported separately by mode and type of service. Additionally, the RR20 form captures services supplied, such as vehicle revenue miles and hours, and also captures services consumed, such as unlinked passenger trips. Additionally, safety and security event totals, injuries, and fatalities are also reported on the form. The RR20 form is only filled out by reduced reporting reporter types, also known as Small Systems Waiver, or SSW. Now, we'll briefly cover statewide characteristics. State DOTs report the following three data items. The number of counties within the state, the number of counties with 5311 service, and the amount of 5311 funds expended on administration of the program at the state level. Typically, the state agency administering the Rural Area Formula Funds, Section 5311, will be responsible for the data collection and compilation from each rural provider in the state serving the general public. Now that we've covered the annual reporting module, let's discuss the monthly reporting module in the associated MR20 form. Agencies filing a full report provide monthly data on the ridership activity MR20 form, which is due on the last day of the following month. For example, June monthly ridership data will be due on the last day of July. The following data points are reported on the MR20. Unlinked passenger trips, vehicle revenue miles, vehicle revenue hours, and vehicles operated in maximum service. Agencies complete an MR20 form for each of their modes. Finally, we'll move on to the final module, the safety and security reporting module and the associated forms. First, there's the Safety and Security CEO Certification SNS 20 form. This form is a letter approved by the transit agency CEO that certifies and attests to the safety and security data submitted in the previous year's report. Next is the Security Configuration SNS 30 form. This form is used to collect information on the number and type of police and or security personnel at a transit agency. The SNS 30 form is completed annually at the beginning of the calendar year. Then we have the major event report SNS 40 form. The SNS 40 is designed to capture detailed information on the most severe safety and security incidents occurring in the transit environment. This form reports detailed data typically gathered from sources such as accident, incident, or police reports. This form is completed for each major incident that occurs, such as collisions, fires, and derailments at an agency. The information required on the form is intended to be of a level that can be collected within 30 days of the event occurrence. Lastly, there's the Summary Security Reporting SNS-50 form. The SNS-50 is designed to collect information on less severe safety-related incidents that are gathered on the major event report SNS-40 form. The SNS-50 summarizes per mode per month the number of safety events such as single injury slips and falls or non-major fires that have occurred and the number of injuries that have occurred in a fixed number of categories. Before we wrap up our presentation and open up for questions, Let's cover the resources available for NTD reporting. The first resource is the NTD help desk phone and email, which serves several purposes, including providing technical assistance for NTD reporters with questions about reporting, applying for an ID, reporting unexpected system behavior, etc. The NTD help desk also provides a line for general public data users who wish to better understand how to navigate NTD's data publications. 
So if you are unable to get a hold of your validation analyst, please contact the NTD Help Desk for technical assistance. Another resource for NTD reporting is your NTD analyst. An NTD analyst, or validation analyst, is assigned to every transit agency who reports to the NTD. These analysts are liaisons to FTA who maintain regular contact with the agency throughout the report year to assist with completing the NTD report and understanding NTD policy. Generally speaking, agencies who currently report to the NTD should always contact their analysts with agency-specific questions. Here are several online resources available for NTD reporting, including the NTD Reporting Policy Manual, the Reduced Reporting Policy Manual, the Asset Inventory Module Reporting Guide, the Uniform System of Accounts, and the Entity Sampling Manual. Additionally, here are the links to the Entity Publications, which includes agency profiles and data reports. We've now reached the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, please submit them using the Q&A button. Um, there's a question in there from Eugene. I guess I guess we'll read them now, since you know we'll read them live. Um, so Eugene wants to know if we receive 5310 funding, do we report 53 data on NTD as well? Eugene, that's a, a great question. Um, it's it's going to come down to whether the, the 5310 funded service is considered public transportation, um, you know, or whether it's it's a client-based service. But um, generally, if it if it is public transportation, then yes, um, you need to account for the 5310 dollars expended. And and if say it supports a demand response mode, then that service data needs to appear on the report as well. Um, Demaya says, please clarify the difference of a full reporter and a reduced reporter. Thank you. Hey, thank you for your question. So a full reporter is essentially an agency that operates uh, 30 or more vehicles during maximum service um, and or they operate a service over fixed guideway. Uh, and we went over, uh, there's a handful of more in-depth forms and data that's required uh, to be a full reporter. Uh, if you're a reduced reporter, you typically operate, well, you, you must operate fewer than 30 vehicles during maximum service, and, uh, and you do not operate over fixed guideway. Uh, if there are any more questions, please type them in the Q&A box. Oh, there's another one. Same person. We operate purchase transportation of 10 VOMS fixed route. Should we change to a reduced reporter? Yeah, if that's the only mode you operate um, and it's not over fixed guideway, then technically you could be you could change to a reduced reporter uh, if you'd like. Uh, I'm not familiar with your service, so I don't know for sure. But if you only have 10 vehicles you operate during maximum service and there's no face guideway, then you would be eligible to report as a reduced reporter. Yeah, and you should and you should con you should reach out to your analyst uh, to to discuss that further, just to uh, to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, they operate fixed route and demand response, respectively. I think that was just more information. That doesn't change the answer, right? Correct. Same answer. So, so please reach out to your analyst to uh, to discuss what you should be doing going forward. Great. Any other questions? Oh, we'll wait a few seconds. Uncomfortable silence. Dead air. Oh, uh, looks like there's a question in the chat box. 
uh, it looks like Joe is chatting with Donna. Do, do we know if that, uh, Donna's asking, uh, so for mechanics, we would report salaries per mode. Would that also apply to fixed route operators and paratransit operators? Meaning I would need to report each mode salary separately. That's a continuation of a conversation I think she was having with uh, Joe. So I'm not sure how easy that is to answer. Yeah, that, that's fine, Lori. I think it's a really a good question that Donna is asking and deals with direct costs and shared costs. So really shared costs are, are those that are um, jointly used to provide two or more modes of, of service. Um, and in that case, there needs to be a, a cost allocation procedure to, to assign the cost to each mode. Um, but in NTD, we, we'd like you to trace the, the direct cost um, wherever feasible uh, to assign the direct cost per mode. And there's more description about this in the manual, but I think the short answer to your question is, is yes. Um, you need to report uh, those salaries that are tracked by mode according to the mode. You need to report an exact amount for that direct cost to the agency. I hope that helps clarify. Let's hope. Um, in the meantime, Eugene has asked, who would be considered an independent auditor for the IAS-FD? Uh, I think the question is probably just, you know, what what qualifications, uh, you know, ultimately it's it's up to the agency to identify an independent auditor, um, you know, to, to vet their qualifications. Ideally, it's, it's uh, someone uh, with a background in, in finance, um, but uh, it, it has to be an independent party. In other words, it can't be an employee of the, the transit agency. Typically, this is something that a, a transit agency would contract out to a local firm similar as they might to, to prepare like financial statements. Great. Um, the next question is from CCMPJXC. Um, says, can you give an example from the B10 form that would qualify as a seasonal segment or RGPD, RGPT, separately reported asset, rural general public transit? We might need clarification to that question. It seems like there, there might be two separate questions. Um, if you could just follow up in, in, the, in the chat, we'll try and, and parse them out and answer each of them individually. OK, well, while we're waiting on that, uh, T. Bateman says, is the IAS uh, FD due every year or every 10 years? Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, the IASFD is due every 10 years, or um, if you happen to have like a major accounting system overhaul, uh, you would then need to redo the IASFD. And then the cycle of 10 years would continue, would start from that point. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, I guess this is clarification from the previous one. Uh, there are two separate questions regarding the B10 form. One, can you give us an example of a seasonal segment? And then I guess they'll come back with two. Yeah, so uh, to answer your first question, an example of a seasonal segment would, the one that comes to my mind is in Oklahoma City, they operate a, a ferry boat service on the river and that river happens to dry up for a few months of the year. So the ferry boat is only in operation for say, uh, you know, eight or nine months depending on the season. So that would be considered a seasonal segment. And on the B10 form, 
uh, you would essentially select the months that uh, that it only operates for. Yeah, and generally speaking, the, the policy is just if it's if its service is not all provided during all months of the year. Correct. Otherwise, it's not seasonal. Um. And it looks like I'm skipping, but I'm just going to part two of that question, where it says, uh, the second question is, can you give an example of what would be considered a RGPT separately reported asset? Yes. So this is kind of a, a really narrow example. It's not going to apply to most agencies, but it is a good question. The, the separately reported asset is, is basically an asset that's that's owned by the agency or the, that the agency has some degree of capital responsibility for but don't actually use to support their own revenue service. Um, so on the B10 form there's a way you can identify another agency that is using this asset um, and you know we, we like to capture these things now really for completeness of all the assets that are in the, the TAM plan you know to make sure that we're capturing everything that you are um, even though the rule in NTD is in general is you should only report the assets that are used in revenue service. So this is kind of a way to break out those that aren't used in your, your revenue service. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, okay, wait, I'm getting out of, okay, that one's done. Uh, we're going back to, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a name, Demaya, Demaya. Is there an example narrative report on targets we can review for the TAM section in NTD reporting forms. I believe that the, the TAM program has kind of a, an example or a template of a, a narrative report. It might, it might just be a kind of illustrative example. Um, and, and if you could follow up with your NTD analyst, we'll provide you a link that helps clarify. Okay, uh, T. Bateman says, uh, thank you. Does a major overhaul of an accounting system, uh, would, I guess that's an example, I guess that's what he's talking about, would it be an upgrade of an accounting system or a new implement implementation of an accounting system? Yeah, that's a great question. If it's an upgrade, say, to software, um, that doesn't really influence how the accounts are recorded, then no, that's that's not something you'd need to redo the IAS FD for. If it's a change to how your accounting records are kept, um, how object classes are assigned within the agency, how certain expenses are assigned or classified, um, and it's it, it's a major overhaul, and obviously there's you know kind of some discretion there, then you need to redo it. In that case, again, we'd recommend talking to your NTD analyst just to understand kind of the scope of the update. And it may even warrant, in some cases, conversation with the program manager at, at FTA to decide, yeah, this is something we need a new, a new FD for. Um, but, you know, when in doubt, communicate with the NTD analyst. Great. Uh, it also looks like Michelle Wright posted uh, a link to narrative report examples. Oh, wonderful! Thank you, Michelle. I'm gonna I'm going to paste that in the chat box as well. Um, everyone should be able to see open, answered, and dismissed questions. But just in case, um, oh, it's not letting me. Okay, it's not letting me copy that link. Um, I can probably get it later if anybody needs it, uh, or just type it right now in your browser if you have two screens. I'll leave that up there for now. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody? Okay. Well, I guess we will wrap it up. Um, Mitchell, Dan, do you have any parting comments before I do my little wrap-up speech? Nope, no more, no more comments from us. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, again, if you, uh, if you have any further questions uh, about webinar or uh, your services uh, specifically, uh, feel free to reach out to your analysts. Uh, use them as your, as your main resource. 
And also, if, um, if you need to reach out to the Entity Help Desk, uh, I believe that was on slide 92. And, and uh, you'll have that information there. Yeah, 92, there right here. So 888-252-0923. Okay. Um, but I think that's all we have. So thank you very much for attending. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks. Um, again, yes, thank you for everyone. Um, a special thank you to our presenters and our question answerers. Um, as a reminder, everyone should be receiving an invitation to fill out an eval for this event. We would love to hear from you, so just take a couple minutes and uh, fill that out. You should get it either later today or tomorrow. So thanks. Uh, we're almost to the weekend. Enjoy. Bye.